Netflix is known for paying the most in this space. Like they, they pay more than any other streaming service. And the theory behind that is if you have one good employee, it's actually worth two people. If you get somebody really good, they might be doing the work of five people. Whereas if you get one bad employee, if you're a business owner, you know how much that can cost you. So now you gotta get six other people to replace that one person before you know it. You spent more money trying to save money. So it's important to only do things that only you can do. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Y'all on the couch this time, man. Okay. Y'all on the couch. Yes, sir. Switch roles here. Switch seats. Okay. So I know y'all, this is Mr. J Hill Podcast Live, but we're going to remix it today because we have a special guest host, Raven Paris. Yes, yes, yes. You're here live at the Wealth Summit Live with Earn Your Leisure. Yes. All right, I'll let you take Yo, can y'all make some noise one more time for Raven Paris, please? Please. Man. We got Rashad is in the building, Troy in the building, Anya Leisure. Um, I guess the first question that comes to mind, guys, is first of all, thank you for pulling up. Yes. Uh, you know, small cities like this, we need this. We get overlooked so many times, man. And, um, and the fact that you guys could come out here, we get Raven. Let's say, let's say that again. Raven can bring out so many people. Shout um, out to Tony, too. We can't forget to, hubby. To get you guys to come up here and talk about financial literacy is, is super important. And we, um, we really appreciate that from, uh, and I say that on behalf of the city, for real. Appreciate that, man. We appreciate y'all. We appreciate the city of Baltimore. You know, Already. some of our, uh, you know, there's the entrepreneurs were from the city of Baltimore. Uh, you know, Derek Falcon, who had his homemade. Uh, we had Valencia Clay, who's from our town, but went to Morgan, hey, who's alum. Um, so Baltimore has always been good to us. Nacho Banger, you know. Yep. He was supposed to get on it tonight, but he yeah, couldn't yeah, fly I mean, from Miami. It's always been good to us. I want to start y'all. All right. So I have like a game, right? Uh -oh. So I'm going to start it and y'all going to finish the sentence. Okay. All right. So no matter how much money I make, I'm still going to eat. Pizza. Pizza. <laughs> yeah, it don't matter. Pizza. I don't really, I don't really eat. Too what do you mean? I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna lie to you, I ain't gonna lie to you man. I'm not you don't really, really eat. Right. I don't eat too bad. I, I don't eat too bad, so I can't. I don't know. Oh, That's a tough one, man. What you cheat? What, what, when you cheat, what do you cheat with? Yeah, what you gonna cheat on? And eat. Come on, man. All right. No, 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 don't give up. No, no, no. no. You don't eat nothing. Like, everything you eat is healthy. Like, everything. <laughs> Yo, we gotta be, we gotta be mindful what we put in our body. That's extremely important. So, it is important right. for sure. It is. Okay. It is. So you don't the snack on nothing? Yeah, 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 I do, but I, I'm not like. What about tuna? Can of tuna? Tuna? Yeah, I eat tuna fish for sure. All right, she, see? she did her research. Yeah. Oh, that's a little, <laughs> people that's consider a that a struggle meal, but tuna good. All right, my wildest college experience was when wildest. Wildest? Yep. Um, we had a lot of fun. I actually, I used to live in Baltimore. I went to school in, in, yep, in Maryland for two years. I see my man Zeke in the building, man. Shout out to hey, Zeke. Hey, Zeke. Um, so we had good times. I went to Maryland, Baltimore County, so that wasn't like a turned up school. But uh -huh. we definitely hung out. Redwood Trust and Hammer Jacks, like all of the Hammer Jacks. <laughs> yeah, and had their homecoming when, uh -huh. you know, it was with the, when they threw parties, when Coppin had their homecoming, when... You know, Morgan threw a party when Morgan had their homecoming. Yeah. So those was always real good times to get that college experience that we didn't get when we were on, on UNBC's campus. So wait, out of all of those events, what was the wildest? Mm -hmm. He named it cute, right? He tried to keep it cute. Yeah, nah, nah. Well, you got to understand, like, for me, like, I was a little bit more mature by the time I get to college. So I was already, I was in clubs when I was 14 years old. Okay. okay. So I wasn't, like going crazy when I get to college. Like, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. It was good vibes, but I never like, oh, I'm in college. Like, I got to go crazy. Like, uh -huh. you know what I mean? But I do remember 
good parties for sure. Even in DC, we had good parties. Yeah, we went DC to was um, lit. that's when H two O was popping. Wow, yeah. Yeah, H two O was popping, and I think it was called Love. Yeah, she was in there. She was in yeah. there. Love, <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was so, there. She was, like, she was that, outside. There. That, that was outside. that was vibes. Like that was vibes. Those was really good. Good memories for sure. Okay, Troy, what about you? I, you know what? I, I stayed home. I didn't. I didn't go away to school. So, like you said, like we were already partying in New York, pretty crazy, um, and doing stuff we probably should have been doing th- throughout our high school careers. But um, yeah, I, I mean, not not too crazy. A couple of vacations with, with with our boys on some spring break type thing, uh, and we survived. So that that's always good. Uh, but not too crazy. We we we're not from that that wild era. Okay, have, y'all just, real cool, calm, Yeah, we have collective. fun, and yeah, we move on to the next thing. Okay, right. last one. The newest thing I've learned about myself is the newest thing you've learned about yourself. Newest thing. Um, the newest thing I learned about myself. I don't really, I don't really know. That's a, that's a tough question. I don't feel like I feel like. Uh <laughs> uh. The newest thing I le- well. I don't know. What's the newest thing you learned about yourself? The newest thing I le- well, it's something that I, it's been developing um, over the past, I guess, maybe five years is, mm-hmm. number one, uh, my level of patience yeah. um, is something that I'm very proud of. And uh, being a go-to person, mm-hmm. I feel like inside a business, that, is, that has become something over the past definitely five years um, with Earn Your Leisure there. You know, I'm very proud of, uh, you know, like I know he can, he can call on me. My other partner might can call on me and anybody has an issue, they can call on me. Um, so being that go to, like kind of that glue guy yeah. is something that I'm learning that it's a responsibility that yeah. has been bestowed upon me that, you know, I can't run. I can't run away from. You know, I wanted to ask y'all something like with the name. I wanted to start there. Mm-hmm. Right. Earn your leisure. Um, we talk about in today's society, for sure. I feel like with each decade or each other year is always a new trend. Yeah. Right? I feel like the trend in these uh, past couple years, it's like this soft life, right? <laughs> and when I hear, and I, I don't want to say like soft woman or soft men, it's just say soft life in general, right, for, for sake of conversation. But when I hear earn your leisure, that's something that resonates with me. And I, and I, and I feel like we should earn, earn. our time, right? Yep. Earn our time off, earn the things that we want in life. Uh, when, when you think of, when you hear the soft life and you hear earn your leisure, is it, can they coexist? Or is it directly opposite of the of the other? But what do you think about the soft life? Talk to me about all of that. Um, so the soft life, I think that's from that's like, what exactly is soft life? I don't want to make sure that I understand it correctly. What do you think about it when you? Well, hear? from my understanding, this is geared towards women being more so y'all, feminine. Y'all think it's just for women? I don't know. I've been seeing some guys trying to live their soft life too. I'm I just feel like that. the soft life is more so you learning how to balance outside of work. You putting work down for a minute to focus on self care, focus on you living that soft life. All right. Now getting the rewards of the work you done put in. You living that soft life. All right. Yeah. What that look like for you? <laughs> That's a good definition. For sure. So <laughs> I feel like I right, earn your leisure. You got to earn everything that, that you have, right? And there's nothing wrong with. You know, taking time off, there's nothing wrong with enjoying vacations, there's nothing wrong with having luxuries, but I feel like in this day and age of social media, people skip steps, and they want to just go on vacation just to take pictures. They, they want to just, you know, have fun, but there's a process. Everything that, that happens in life, there's a process, and most of the time, you don't actually see the process. So this is something that's extremely important to understand. Like, I read Steve Jobs' book, and one of the things that I got from that was, like, enjoy the journey yeah. like that's that's something that you really gotta you know that should be enjoyable to you like work isn't it's not like work should be hard like if you if you're doing work and you hate doing it then you should do something else like it should be something that you actually enjoy doing it doesn't mean that it's easy to do mm-hmm. but it's enjoyable like you know when you put together a business like there's challenges, there's ups and downs, there's gonna have to deal with personalities, you're gonna have to deal with cash flow issues, you gotta create new ideas, you gotta deal with competition, you gotta deal with a variety of different things, but these are all things that's part of the journey, like you really gotta appreciate that, mm-hmm. you gotta love that part of it, um, even more so than just hanging out, going on vacation, like, yeah. you know what I mean? So I feel like for an entrepreneur, or for inspiring entrepreneurs, it's, it's important for them to understand that, like, this is, this is a marathon, like Nip said, right? It's a marathon. So really enjoy the process. Um, 
and look forward to the process. Don't just look forward to a soft life or just look forward to just chilling all day. You know, they, they will be able to reap the benefits of that done. Um, but if you understand that, then you will be able to reap the benefits of that work at some point. Yeah, I, so I, I'd say yes, they can coexist. Mm -hmm. um, but the key part of it, and kind of like to paraphrase what Shadi just said, it was everything he talked about was earning. Yeah. And so people, they skip to the leisure part, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to skip to the leisure part. They forget the first part of it and that, that you have to earn it. There's a process into it. It's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take determination. It's going to take dedication. It's going to take tough skin. Um, and that's something that you have to learn, but that makes it even more beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, the journey is a destination. So it's like, can it coexist? Yes, right? But the first thing is you have to figure out the purpose of what you're doing, mm -hmm. understand that it's gonna take some sacrifice, mm -hmm. right? And then there could be leisure. I think it was important when we were just talking to Chris and Janine and I was like, hey, mental health is important. How do you maintain yeah. yours? And it was like, we have to say, all right, we can run, we can run, we can run. But. but we have to have a reset, and that's what balance comes into it too, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like somebody needs to tell you, like, hey, mm -hmm. you need to be here. Like, I've had that conversation plenty of times where I'm in a room with my family, and my wife is reminding me, yeah, you're here, but be present. Mm -hmm. Be present. Be present in this moment, right? Because mm -hmm. this is the only, this is not guaranteed. So mm -hmm. it can coexist, um, but I don't want people to skip that, that first part of the leadership. Also, I think it's extremely important for entrepreneurs this is I have a theory on, on how to be successful as an entrepreneur and you have to curve your enthusiasm like never get too high never get too low you just got to always stay even kill because you end up burning yourself out emotionally like you get too high but you, you hit a big deal and then you think like you're the king of the world and then you know tomorrow everything falls apart and then you get depressed and that's not it's not sustainable this is why a lot of people just quit business not even from a financial standpoint, just from an emotional standpoint, they can't, you never know, like, something gotta always just stay even kill. like, you never know, like, something could look like a blessing, and it could actually be a curse. Yep. Something could look like a curse, and it could actually be a blessing, it's like, let's just have patience, like, you know, you gotta, like, one thing I'll never forget, when Floyd fought um, Conor McGregor, and after the fight was over, and they interviewed Conor, and he was like, um, Floyd, he's not really as fast as I thought he was. He doesn't really hit as hard as I thought he was. He's not like, he was just saying a bunch of different things that he's not. But he was like, what he is is extremely poised. Mm -hmm. he, like, he has extreme composure. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to keep your composure. That's extremely important. That's why I tell people all the time, just keep your composure. And that's something that's extremely underrated. Like, to stay calm. Like, you, know, you never know how something is going to turn out. You got to have patience. You got to have composure. That's extremely important. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now... You got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I see you there. No, that's a fact. And, and even outside of the, the business, like you said, you touched on the emotional part, right? It's like with today's society, we, we see social media being su such a big part of our lives. We're so consumed in it, right? But it's like even what we do, even on the come up, what you guys do, the podcast, it's like you live by the praise, you want to die by it, right? So if you're going to be happy that you got, I don't know, 1,000 likes, 5,000 likes, when you get 10 likes, that's going to hurt your feelings. So if you stay even killed, right, none of it make you too excited, none of it make, make you too sad. You feel what I'm saying? And same thing with, like, struggle. You feel me? Like, if something go, go, go on, understand that, man, this is a blessing. I'm here. Look for the, the joy in it. You feel me? I think that's extremely important as well. Yeah, that's, that's one of those conversations that we used to have all the time. Even before all this, it was, you know, social media being a part of our lives but not being our entire lives. Right? There's still... Yeah, clap it up. 
there's, there's still a portion of life, there's a large portion of life that we're going to live that most people aren't going to see. I understand the importance of it. I understand that it's helped business to scale. And, I mean, you actually have to live in. And so there's also that other part that people aren't going to see that you actually have to live in. And so I want to be great at that too. So you, know, you just have to make sure that you're focusing on that as well. Can we talk about investments? Because I feel like even bringing y'all here, that was a scary investment for me and Tony. You get what I'm saying? I feel like being an entrepreneur, you have to make those investments where you're going to be uncomfortable, where you may not make the money, but it's worth the opportunity and experience of what y'all are doing. So I want to talk about what was y'all first scariest investment and what is your thoughts on, you know, the importance of investing if you are an entrepreneur? Yeah, I think um, you have to invest as an entrepreneur. You got to invest in your business. You got to invest in employees. You got to invest in relationships. You got to invest in your future. You got to invest in your education. It's, it's never a situation where you just get money and just hoard it. Like, money is not meant to just be, you know, kept in a vault. Money is meant to be exchanged and flow, and that's a real way how you actually get more money. Like, this is a, most people operate from a scarcity mindset. Never really had much, so it's like the whole the whole idea is that as soon as we get anything, we just want to hoard it and keep it to ourselves. But that's not really the best way to go about it. I use Elon Musk as an example of this. You know, this is a guy who people don't know. He actually started PayPal, sold PayPal for two hundred million when he was like thirty years old. So the average person, you get two hundred million dollars at thirty, and it's like I'm done. I'm going to the Bahamas and I'm just chilling. And he reinvested every single bit of what he made and moved into his in-law's basement to start SpaceX before Tesla. SpaceX didn't work out originally. He really went broke. Mm -hmm. Then he starts Tesla. Then SpaceX gets up and running again. And now he's a trillionaire, damn near, right? He's going to be the first trillionaire, really. And second richest man do that, though. That separate. How many people have enough courage to do that, though? That separates people that's average from people that's great. And that's okay if you want to be an average person. But for me, like, I'm not scared of money. Like, I, I reinvest, I, I'm, I'll invest money because I look at it like, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. You, go, you can't lose when you started from a situation where you didn't really have too much anyway. You can go back to that. Like, it's not like you started as a billionaire, then it's like, damn, I got a lot to lose. Mm -hmm. You know, you start, you got $3,000 in your bank account. That ain't really too much to lose. Even if you get up to a million, like, you still have a long way to go to where you have to go in life. So I look at it like, of course, you should be educated in what you invest in. You don't want to just waste money foolishly. That's not the best way to go about it. But understanding that investing is more than just putting money in the stock market. Like, investing is actually, like you said, building time to spend relationships. Most important investment that you can ever make. However you can get a relationship is extremely important. That's, that's an investment. Your education is another extremely important investment. We here at a university, right? Yeah. But education is bigger than just a university or a high school. Like, variety of different ways how you can educate yourself. That's an investment that's extremely important. Investing in your business. Investing in employees. Like we was at, we was in the Hamptons and we was at, um, it was like this small summit for extremely like successful black entrepreneurs and um, somebody was speaking and they were saying that Netflix manifesto, everybody should read it, it's online, it's like 250 pages and it goes over Netflix business model and Netflix is known for paying the most in their space, like they, they pay more than any other streaming service. And the theory behind that is if you have one good employee, it's actually worth two people. So me paying somebody one good employee doing the work of two people, if you get somebody really good, saving money because he's doing the work of two people. If you get somebody really good, they might be doing the work of five people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you get one bad employee, if you're a business owner, you know how much that can cost you. Mm -hmm. So now you gotta get six other people to replace that one person before you know it. You spent more money trying to save money. Yeah. So I used to tell him this all the time too, like it's important to only do things that only you can do. Yeah. Like me personally, I'm not cutting grass, changing the light bulb, none of that. Not that I'm, I don't think I'm too big for that, but I feel like it's wasting my time. Like the time that I could have, it takes me an hour to cut grass, let's say, or shovel. In that time, I could have did something. I could have paid somebody $20 to do that and did something to make $10,000. It's an so, argument we always have. 
But I learned that I learned that in business as a financial advisor when I first started. You know, I'm answering emails, I'm sending out letters, I'm doing all this stuff, and people that's making millions of dollars they they telling me this. Like you answering these emails, you you doing the letterhead, you doing all of this stuff. Like, but sometimes we do busy work, and it satisfies our ego, and we think we're actually doing something, but when we're not really doing, we're, doing we're, we're, we're doing things, but we're not doing things productive. We're not, we're not being productive. So you could work for 12 hours, but what did you really do to make money? Nice. That's how I look at it. Like, I'm not just working just for the sake of working. Mm -hmm. I'm only working to do things that's going to make money. Mm -hmm. So only way you can do that is to have other people do those things. You got to scale. The first yeah. way to be able to scale. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So this is, this is the argument we have. This is true, right? But a part of it was like, again... If I'm creating a business, I need to know everything inside of that business. Mm -hmm. and so it comes, there's, there's two sides to that coin, right? And so if we're starting a show, become that. Mm -hmm. If, you know, if I, then I have to become that. If I don't know how audio, then I have to become that. Mm -hmm. If, you know, if I'm not a sound engineer, then I have to become that. Mm -hmm. To the point, like for a lot of us, when we're starting, we can't afford to have those people. And we may not be able to offer equity to them. Mm -hmm. And so the, there's a gift to it that, yeah, it does take time. But what it does do is sharpen my skill that if there's any a point when somebody can't do something, I know I can, I know I got our business. Like even now from this live event space, mm -hmm. you're learning so many things, mm -hmm. right? Maybe five years ago that you, you might have hired an event planner and saw what they were doing and said, all right, I learned that, I can learn that. That's where the camera's gotta get mm -hmm. set up. We gotta do labs, somebody has to have the, the labs on us, we got the handhelds, mm -hmm. who's recording this audio. You know, everything inside of that business, mm -hmm. now it makes you sharper. Yep. So it's, it's, there, it does take time, but there is a benefit to it too. It's a, it's a graduation. Yeah. You, you do things yeah. early to learn it. Right. Out of necessity, you have to. Yeah. But too many people continue that process for too long. Yeah. At a certain point in time, you're hurting yourself by right. continuing to yeah. do those small, tedious tasks. You have to have other people that help you. Yeah. And that, that, that's what when we talk about scale, right? So now when it's like, I don't have time to do that, now it's time to hire somebody. Yes. And sometimes you got to train somebody to do that. And you make more money by doing that. There right. you go. There you but go. I, I feel like when we talk about investing, right, I feel like when we start, because a lot of times, coming from where we come from, well, I don't know, coming from where I'm from, yeah. we ain't never see money in our lives. We don't even know what that looked like, right? So when we get it, we think we are investing in things that we should be investing in because we care about it. We think it's, it's something that we're passionate about. We like it, but it don't make sense. What about making those calculated risks when you're talking about investing in things? I don't, I don't even know if it's, it's a calculated risk. I think it's more of an educational risk. I don't mm. even call it a risk. Like when you said the scariest investment, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know if I've had a scary one because I've always felt like I've prepped myself for that, that, mm. that move, whether it be a relationship, whether it be inside of a stock market. I remember, you know, sitting there in my account, mm. right? Because we don't risk the amount of money, I'm going to invest all of it, mm. and, right? Because we don't realize how close to zero we really are. Right. Right? Like, if I invest a thousand dollars, I'm not that far away from zero anyway. Yeah. Right? If I had a billion dollars and I invest yeah. 500 million, mm -hmm. that's different, mm -hmm. right? So, if I get to 10,000 and I'm like, yo, I'm gonna invest 50% of this, I'm not that far from zero. So, literally, that, that happened to me. Like, just a full transparency. It was like, all right, I wanna have six figures saved in my account before I make like a huge that investment. That was my goal, too. Right? It was like, yo, this is a goal for me, I gotta get to it. And I did it. And I was like, well, am I going to be a man of my word and true to myself and invest in six figures like I said I would before I had it? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. But before I do it, make sure I educate myself, make sure I have the right mentorship, make sure that I make the right decision, right? And the right decision is the, the one that you're going to make ultimately. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. It wasn't the scariest one. It was like, I believe in this. That turned into being one of the best investments I ever made. I turned the six figures into seven figures. Mm -hmm. Yo, speaking of invest, y'all got Invest Fest coming up. Yes. August, right? August 25th through the 27th. What, what happens at Invest Fest? And for the people that don't know, if you can explain it to us. Yeah, it's just a um, financial literacy business festival, kind of mirrored after like different music festivals or other type of cultural festivals, but based around business. So it was an opportunity to do something to bring thousands of people. Last year we had 14,000 people. This year we're looking to have 20,000. What numbers? People. Thank you. So, you know, it's, um, it's crazy. You know, we started it two years ago. Um, and last year, you know, we had like Tyler Perry, Steve Harvey, a bunch of people. This year we got Robert Smith and Diddy and Rich Paul, a bunch of other people. Um, it's really just a, a, a beautiful event because it brings so many people together. You have small business vendors. You have food trucks from all different backgrounds, all different podcasts, musical performances. But 
people from all different backgrounds, all different parts of the, the world coming together um, for the same mission, to just learn, to learn, to network, good energy, you know, and I think that there's only so much that you can do online. Yeah. Like, events are important. Physical congregation is extremely important. It's the reason why, like, if you study religion, the core tent of that they all have in common is that there's some level of congregation. There's strength in congregation. It's important. Like, so if we can have a type of an event where, you know, thousands of people come together, now you might be able to meet your business partner. You might be able to meet somebody that can help mentor you. You might be able to, you know, have a business idea and meet somebody that wants to invest in your business, right? It's hard to do that online, no matter how strong of an online community you have. So that was the idea behind it. And, you know, just seeing that, you know, there was opportunity in the space. And success loves speed. That's another thing. Like, I feel like if you have a good idea, you can't sit on it. You got to be able to execute it fast. Um, and that's what we was able to do. And three years later, we're here now. So. Yeah. And it's, it's a mix of education and entertainment, right? Like, we, we know we like to have, be entertained, but we also know that education is important to us. And so, yeah, we, last year we had Rick Ross perform for us. This year we're going to have Jeezy perform. Like you said, we have a vendor marketplace with over 400 businesses. We have a podcast stage where people are going to be able to, you know, highlight their talents in the world of podcasting. We have food trucks. All these things that we see at, even if we see them at homecoming, right? Mm -hmm. We see these things at homecoming. We see these things at festivals. We've seen them at summits, mm -hmm. but we've never seen it all come together, and we haven't seen us do it. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing. So the fact that we're doing it mm -hmm. for us, for our community, and for all other communities, I think that's what makes it so unprecedented. So look, this is what I want to do. Baltimore. I'm trying to do something for my community. We got to wrap you know, it I'm up, from, I'm, from, I'm from Baltimore. We from Baltimore. I'm trying to do something for my community, too. Yeah. So I'm trying to give out at least, like, 10. Let's say, can we do, like, I'm going to put you on the spot. I ain't ask y'all this. Y'all don't know. At least 10 free tickets to Invest Fest. Can we do 10? That's easy. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Hold up. Oh. I mean, what? You trying to do like 50? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you said that's easy. I mean, that's easy. That's Close easy. Closed mouth don't get fed. We could do, we could do the tickets, but let's, 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 let's do something that, let's make it, because one thing I learned is that people don't value or they don't respect things that's yes. free. Yes. So I'm not opposed to doing free, but let's tie it to something. If it's going to be college students, let's, yep. have them, let's have them write two paragraphs. Yep. If, it's a, if it's an entrepreneur, let's let them... This make, it's still going to be free. Earn your invest pay. Let's, let's make it tied to something uh -huh. where it's right, like they actually got to have some level of. Cool. You make, I'm going to set it up. Something. I'm going to set it up. No, no, no. We're going to up the ante. I need like 25 now. <laughs> hey, you got to I mean, let him go, Jay. We're going we to do something. How about this? We're going to figure it out. If we get it up to 25, I'm going to tie you into it now. I want you to find these people and I want you to get their feedback of their experience at InvestFest when they get there. Say less. Done? You got it. So give it up one last time for Earn Your Leisure. Let's thank them for dropping these gems, for coming to Baltimore, for being a part of the Wealth Summit Live, our first annual. We Congra appreciate con it. Thank you so much for having con us. Congratulations on putting this together. I know an event is not easy to do. In three weeks. We had to market this in three weeks. Right, so shout fact. out to y'all too. Incredible. Was something that our first event, we did our first event in... Uh, California, in Carson, California. It was a networking event. And um, we had about 50 people. It was really dope. It was three years ago. And um, you, you, build a, you build a thousand people at InvestFest. So, Come on. Yeah. yeah. You, you, build a, you build a pyramid. You build a pyramid one brick at a time. Um, but the most important thing is to take the first step. Yeah. So that is the hardest thing to do in life and in business. And um, once you get motion, it's just downhill skiing from there. So congratulations and yeah. thank you for having us. Really appreciate yes. it. Thank Raven, you. I, I want you to tell them because they may not know that they'll never hear this part of the story. So I want to put you on the spot. Like this wasn't, hey, I'm going to call Earn Your Leisure in, in May of 2023 and see if they can get here in July of 2023. Tell them how long you, you reached it's out. It's been a while, y'all. Tony started talking to Earn Your Leisure team a year ago, okay, and he remained consistent and kept contacting and kept reaching out. He didn't come to me to tell me about, y'all think I'm the faces, but it's really Tony. Tony came to me about 
February. Like, all right, Ray, I've been talking to Earn Your Leisure. I think we should bring them here. And y'all know they're on tour. So literally, this is the only date that we could fit in, which is why it was kind of pushed last minute. So shout out to y'all for even being a part of the mission. Yes. And it was worth it. I'm so excited we got to have y'all come. Thank you for having us. Appreciate y'all, man. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Baltimore, thank you for always supporting us and showing us love. Appreciate y'all so much.